We are talking all things Japan today. We are going to be telling you some top tips from our Japan travels recently. Let us jump right in. We're going to kind of categorize this. And so we're going to first start with preparing your trip. So in preparing your trip, something that some of you might be concerned with is the internet situation. And I think it kind of depends where you're coming from and what your phone situation is. For us, we have um, two phones. One of them we own and we don't have associated with any sort of SIM card or phone company. And so we actually use an eSIM. And that is actually really cheap. And mm -hmm. I would say the preferred if you can. I understand that some people are contracted to certain phone companies and so that might not be possible but if you can an eSIM is definitely the way to go and honestly fairly cheap and you use far less um, data than you would think. Mm -hmm. um, so we use the app called Aerolo and I personally did the 20 gigs and Murphy did the 10 and I think mine was maybe around 20 US dollars. Murphy's was less and he got his own ideal and I honestly only used half of the gigabytes that mm -hmm. I needed so I would have gone with Murphy's plan. I think you can download it anywhere but we also use this when you go back to the US and a nice feature about Airlo is that you can buy the package that you want beforehand and it tells you how many gigs and for the like max duration that you can have it. And then it won't kick in until you're within the cellular service of that country, which is really nice. You can kind of buy it ahead of time and then it's not going to start until you get there. So that's what I would recommend doing. However, if you are contracted through your company and can't necessarily get an eSIM, aka you can't have your phone unlocked, um, then I would recommend getting a mobile Wi-Fi and these you can actually just rent out of the airport. I would do this in advance for sure and you can actually rent them to pick up at the airport and then it's like a daily fee and then you can have it and then you just return it upon leaving the country. Um, another thing preparing is cash. Um, so I would say for the most part uh, you can get around most places just with your credit card. Um, most places take it, especially if you're in the bigger metropolitan cities, Tokyo, Kyoto, Osaka, like most places are going to, but there are going to be some hole in the wall places that are going to take cash only and also your Suica card, um, which is getting around via the public transportation system. That's mostly going to take cash. However, there is an app on your phone that you can get to get the Suica card. We opted for just doing the card like it was easier and I think that they're specific to certain card operators. Mm -hmm. Like I think they're only MasterCard maybe. Um, and so we just opted to get a physical Suica card and those you need to re-up with cash. Yeah. And so luckily I came with some cash to get the Suica cards. You have to put like a deposit. I think it's like 500 per Suica card and then you add on your money from there. So have some, make sure your card works there if you need more or just come with like a decent amount. But I would say try if you can to come with minimal that you need and then pull out as you need there because honestly the ATM fees and the um, conversion is going to be better getting cash there than anywhere else. I think like you could get away without ever having cash if you can get your or like if you never take public transport or if you can get that to work on your phone because like any restaurant you go to will have card, any store. Most though, because remember we went to that beer restaurant and they didn't, they only mm. took cash. You never really know. Yeah. Like there's there. definitely going to be some random places. I think generally they're going to have some sort of sign or something before you actually like sit down that's going to say that you have to pay cash so that you're not in like a pickle of like trying to figure out what to do. Mm. But I think it's always better to have at least some just in case because yep. yeah you never know but I would say most places do take card. 
Another thing would be, if you can, try to book a hotel with some sort of onsen or hot tub pool situation if you can because it definitely is a game changer. Three out of four of our hotels had some sort of onsen bath situation and it really is so nice to just come home to at the end of the day because you walk a lot and your body hurts. It's really nice to just have a relaxation of sorts and yeah so we our first hotel in tokyo and i will put all of our hotels in the description below but our first hotel in tokyo had a bath situation i personally did not go in that um they are a little bit strict on tattoos and i have a fair amount and i didn't want to like cover all of them so i didn't go but murphy went no. and then our second hotel in kyoto um those i did cover and they had a sauna and hot tub or hot warm bath situation and they would just alternate days for men and women so mm -hmm. one day all the women would get the sauna and the men would get the hot tub and then it would alternate so that was really nice and i did go in the sauna area then our last hotel which was right by the airport in um tokyo or by narita um, that also had one you did have to pay but I it wasn't really that much and I was totally comfortable paying that and they were totally like fine with tattoos and stuff so that was really nice they had a sauna and a bath and then a local like pool which I didn't go in you went in because I didn't pool, have yeah. a swimsuit they gave you a cap to wear in the pool so yeah <laughs> but it's just like it's a really nice way to just end the evening and relax and if you don't get a hotel with an onsen, try to find a public onsen at mm -hmm. least for one day to experience it because it's really nice. The next category we're going to move into here is related to getting around when you're in Japan. So one of the first things that we have to mention is an umbrella because it does rain there quite a bit. I don't know about summer, but no. I think any of the other seasons expect rain um i think living in the netherlands we kind of always expect rain but one thing that is nice is a lot of hotels offer um, umbrellas for you to take in the reception area and just return at the end of the evening but i think it's nice to at least buy one just in case they're all out definitely don't feel like you need to bring your own from home but buy maybe buy one when you see one or if you just want to use the hotel um, and be brave and think that you'll always get one, um, just don't leave it at a place. Murphy did that once, but <laughs> yeah, because okay. when you go to the store, you put them in like a little bin outside, mm -hmm. and I forgot to get it because it wasn't. Right yeah, like some that. restaurants have a bin for them. Some places they make you cover them in plastic so you're not dripping water everywhere. Mm -hmm which is genius really um and yeah so umbrellas are definitely necessary it rains surprisingly a lot probably rained almost every day yeah it's kind every of day. it's kind of like the netherlands like um it it might not be in the forecast but it will just randomly rain for like five minutes yeah. and you're not expecting it so it happens right, the next uh topic in this category is getting around with maps so um, we took public transport pretty much everywhere or walked um, and my tip for this one is uh, any any maps that you use so I use Apple Maps sometimes Google Maps I use Google Google Maps um, when you use the public transit usually you'll take the train um, and uh, what's nice here is it will tell you which exit to take once you get to the station that you're going to so you can plug in where you need to go uh, it'll take you to the closest station uh, near you and it'll tell you which entrance to go in. They're usually numbered or lettered um, and when you get to your destination it'll say use exit 13 or something like that uh, and it will be the quickest way to get where you need to go and usually will result in you not having to cross streets either because a lot of the um, stations are all underground so you will go under the street to the other side for example um, to get where you need to go. So that was super helpful um, and definitely saved a lot of time of getting out of the train station and then trying to figure out which way you need to go and having to cross a bunch of streets. Like if you went to London, they don't really tell you which one to take. Mm -hmm. um, so that was super helpful. But in that same breath, it tells you which car to get in. Yeah. So you're in like the car that's closer to the exit. And yeah, that's really nice too. Yeah, I miss it. It's 
very convenient, very, very clean. Mm -hmm. And people are very respectful of like, people are getting off. So you stand to the side yeah. until everyone's off. And then you all get like, it's very like, we, I don't think we were vlogging yet when we went to Singapore, but it's, it's similar to Singapore and mm -hmm. that they're very like respectful about things, um, on public transportation. So yeah. the next tip that we have in this category of getting around is convenience stores, um, which usually you'll see everybody loves the convenience stores of Japan. And for some reason, everybody loves 7-Eleven or that's the only one that you see. But for us, Lawson's was number one. It was so much better than 7-Eleven um, in our experience. I think the food was a lot better. There was a lot more variety and they like always had things stocked where 7-Eleven yeah. felt like uh, all the ones we went to were just out of products. So I think we probably had a egg salad sandwich and an onigiri <laughs> for Almost one meal a day. Every day or um, every other day. And eggs. I always got the soft-boiled yeah. eggs for morning. They sell them in like one or two packs. I would get them every night so I could have them for the morning. Yeah, Lawson's is really good. So yeah, we're Lawson lovers. I know a lot of people are 7-Eleven lovers, but we're Lawson or Family Mart. Um, but Lawson, we just gravitated towards Lawson's. Yeah. I don't know. The last thing in this category is going to be asking locals about places to go. I think specifically in regards to places to eat because when you're looking at places on maps and whatnot, if you're just looking, for example, at ramen places um, in English, for example, you're gonna get um, places that are advertising in an English name, but not everybody's gonna be like advertising themselves in English or maybe even in Google Maps in general. And so if it's just in Japanese, like you're likely not going to find it. So for example, when we were in Osaka, we met a guy at a brewery and he was a local and he told us about this ramen place that wouldn't come up. Mm -hmm. Like if we searched it, whatever, we had to have him search it in Japanese on his phone and then, um, he airdropped it to us so that we knew where it was because there was there was no way we would have ever found this place no. um so definitely like ask your hotel or ask if you just meet people locally like definitely ask them like what their favorite place to eat is or if you're looking for something specific what's your favorite this because they might know something that you don't and that you're not going to find yourself and the ramen place that we were recommended was top notch it was so delicious and we definitely wouldn't have found as good a place, yeah. especially in the late evening. Um, we would have just found probably like a chain or, or something. And this was definitely a very cool local spot with really great ramen. So okay, let's move on to the next category. Things that we were just generally pleasantly surprised with around Japan. One of these things, like things we just loved, like cultural things that just, or we haven't experienced. And one the shoes off they just want you to take your shoes off everywhere and i totally get that like let's not track dirt around everywhere like if you're in a shop and you want to try clothes on you take your shoes off before getting into the dressing room totally respect that one restaurant we went to you took your shoes off and then you sat on the floor and then when you wanted to go to the bathroom they had bathroom slippers at the cat cafe you took your shoes off and you were in the cat area and then there were bathroom slippers like i love that the amenities in the hotels also very great like most hotels you know give you shampoo conditioner body wash that's about it lotion maybe you got like the whole face wash situation like a like a three minimum step skincare routine you got facial washcloths you got q-tips you got razors you got toothpaste you got toothbrushes like it was like the whole nine yards mm -hmm. bidets here for it can't get away from it think about it every day wish we had one every single day why don't we all have heated toilet seats and seats that wash our butt right yeah why is that not more normalized who doesn't want a clean butt the pajamas every single place gives you pajamas like nice pajamas too one place we had a nightgown 
the other place we had a shirt and a pants set. Listen, I'm not gonna lie, I, I took the pants. I took the pants. They're amazing. I love them. <laughs> the workers in general, very appreciative of you to be there. Like they're very respectful, very appreciative. No one is rude. Never experienced a rude person ever. Lastly, the warm napkins or the warm like towels. Mm. I would much rather have a warm towelette to wipe my fingers and my face, my lips upon eating than like a dry crinkly napkin, you know, like it's just so nice some places they like that's like your napkin some places it's like that's like your starter like you like wipe your hands and then they take it and then you have a regular napkin either way i'll take it so interesting things <laughs> next things we wish we would have known before we got there first of all the garbage situation I kind of knew this based off of TikToks, but like not maybe to the extent, but there is literally like no public garbage. Um, it is pretty much your responsibility to collect your garbage and bring it back and dispose of it in your home if you're local and at your hotel if you are a tourist. So if you're gonna be eating or like grabbing or like have gum or something, bring something to like dispose of it and just like put it in your purse or something because there's not you're not going to come across public garbage like it's just not going to happen i'd say with that a lot of people <clears throat> well local people will carry like a hand towel to use after they use a the bathroom get one of those um or bring one like of a those with you um yeah otherwise you're just stuck with wet hands if they don't have a hand dryer which happened a few times mm -hmm. or um, if you're just against hand dryers because they definitely spread germs but like a lot of people carry those locals and then i think the other one would be like bring a plastic bag with you whether you can get a trash bag from your hotel or like a shopping Zip bag from somewhere to put anything that's like wet in so it doesn't get yeah. the rest of your bag whatever right. might fit in your backpack or whatever yeah yeah kind of in that same breath is people over there don't really eat or drink publicly um definitely no eating um drinking i feel like is a little bit more lax i guess but you still don't really see it people just kind of like um for example if you just go to a convenience store a lot of them have like little areas where you can eat there some don't though so it's worth taking note of or like food trucks or like something that's up they usually have some sort of like little stand to eat at so you're not walking around eating so don't walk around and eat i guess yeah. is the moral of the story still kind of on the food area if your hotel offers it and you are definitely a breakfast person i would recommend getting the breakfast option at your hotel mm -hmm. because a lot of places don't open very early um like for example our hotel in tokyo the like bakery coffee area didn't open till like 8 39 yeah. yeah and we're up fairly early so if you if you get up later like it doesn't really matter it's kind of hard to find like a coffee early and stuff so generally your hotel has like you know a coffee machine in your room or something it's obviously not this good but that's worth taking note of another thing that we definitely were the most surprised by and weren't ex we didn't like see anything about before we went is that a lot of places close between two and like five or six or don't open in general until six or later and so if you are like us and we like eat kind of late and then we're not hungry again until like a really inconvenient time like two o'clock three o'clock yeah. This is definitely good to note because a lot, like, it's going to be hard to find places or, like, if you just wanted to stop for a cocktail or something, it's going to be tough to find. I think maybe in Tokyo it's going to be a little bit easier, but other places it's definitely going to be a bit more difficult. We ran into this problem in Kyoto and Osaka. We just, like, wanted a cocktail before we went out to dinner or something and just, like, there wasn't really 
anywhere open. They closed between 2 and 5. Um, or like I said, like bars won't even open till 6 or 7. So that's definitely good to note. Lastly, I think is going to be gyms. So if you are a gym rat or just like feel like you need to hit the gym when you're on vacation, I think it's good to book a hotel with a gym if you can because local gyms are going to be very strict on the tattoo situation if you have them. If you don't, by all means. But for example, Gold's Gym is going to be like your best gym option if you are a tourist and wanting to go to like a full out gym. They offer guest passes which is really nice. Um, and there's definitely a few around Tokyo specifically. I don't know that there's any in Kyoto or Osaka. My experience is strictly Tokyo, but they are strict on the tattoos. If you have them, they can be covered. Hotels are going to be less so. Um, so our first hotel had a gym, but they didn't have weights. And then in Osaka, they had a gym with weights, and so I didn't have to worry about it. But that's definitely good to know if you like to keep on track with your fitness and stuff and want to go to a gym if you have tattoos just take notes so you're not super disappointed and if you can go for a hotel with the gym spend a little extra money for that because um otherwise you're going to be kind of disappointed possibly so in the things that we kind of knew but uh maybe we it was more apparent to us when we got there was um a lot of times places either won't accept reservations or you have to call them which can be kind of daunting if uh, they answer in Japanese and yeah, you don't know what they're saying. So um, with that, yeah, if you can book places online, definitely do that. Some places are just, you have to wait in line um, before you go in. And sometimes those are the best places because uh, people will wait a long time and- Clearly people want to be there. <laughs> and they just don't take reservations. So you wait your turn and then the food is usually going to be pretty good. Or if you really need to, you can have the hotel call and um, either clarify something with the place you're going or book a reservation for you if they have them available. Um, I think we got away mostly with uh, doing things, booking things online or um, yeah, just showing up and a lot of them have, a lot of the really good places won't have a ton of seating inside so that's generally why you're gonna wait longer. Um, but usually once you get in, you'll get your food pretty quickly and then get out pretty quickly, so. I think my only last minute like tips in general would be one, I think Google, the My, the My Maps for Google is a really great tool if you're traveling. Um, you can create your own map depending on where you're going and you can pin all the places. So if there's things you really wanna do or restaurants you really wanna go to, you can pin them all on a map and that can kind of help you um, itinerize each day so that you're not having to go all over and like spend more money um, getting around and also help you pick the best area for a hotel in each place. Mm -hmm. So I created one of those for each um, location that we were going. And then Get Your Guide is one of my favorite sites to book tours on. We did our like sumo, wrestling tour through there and then also our day trip to um, around Kyoto and going to Nara through there and I've done like a, a tour through there almost every place we've gone and yeah. it's always been great. My other one was the for Google Translate um, mm. so you can download different languages within that and then um, if you get stuck somewhere where you don't have internet, the downloaded language uh, will work for you, but... Um, there were definitely some times that yeah. we used it, if anything, for menus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's been not just Japan, that's been other places too, even mm -hmm. here, like there's places... Yeah, we use it every day here. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, if you don't already... If you're not aware of Google Translate, it's great. It's amazing. It's yeah. a great app. Yeah. Um, and I think lastly... I personally look for hotels on booking.com after I've done my uh, mind apps on Google and then I kind of like favorite all of the options based on location and price and then I also I double check on the actual hotel whatever ones I've saved like their website to see if it's cheaper because mm -hmm. a lot of times I've noticed depending where you're going um, the hotels are oftentimes offering some sort of 
deal based on if you stay X amount of days. And so it sometimes ends up being cheaper than booking.com. And so like that happened, we were, were planning a trip for Greece and it was um, like, a, like, I don't know, 25% less on the hotel website than it was on booking.com because they want you to book through their site um so i think that's worth taking note of as well yeah i think my only last thing is i was kind of like i don't know not scared or nervous but uh like timid about going to japan because uh, everything is in a different language and it's like super foreign but once you get there it's not it just feels like a big city like it feels like London I haven't been to New York but I assume it's probably similar to that where it's a global city everybody speaks English or can get someone to communicate with you in English so definitely don't be scared it's so worth it though mm -hmm. like as soon as we came back we were already talking about what we would do if we went back, so another trip back. Um, yeah. just kind of make a list and prioritize on what you really want to do and uh, just make it the best you can and enjoy yourself. Like, don't itinerize too much. Allow yourself some freedom to, like, get there and, like, be, you know, inspired by other people or whatnot. Like, don't, don't itinerize the whole thing to a T. I would say definitely leave some loose plans for spontaneity because that's going to make your trip even better i would say because most of the people that you'll run into there are also traveling and visiting there so they'll be like oh they'll yesterday something to say, i went yeah. here and it was really good so or lo locals yeah. like we had some locals and like unexpected things that we wouldn't have thought of and whatnot and it changed the chain changes the trajectory of your trip a little bit and adds kind of some more character to your trip and uh, most of the time, like things that you remember more than maybe the things that you plan for yourself. So yeah. um, take that as you will. Everybody plans their trips differently, but those are our tips from our recent trip to Japan. And if you haven't watched our vlogs from Japan, definitely go watch those. Mm -hmm. And other than that, um, we'll see you in a vlog uh, very, very soon. Where to next? We are off back home next and we're having our official wedding um if we haven't mentioned on here we've been married for like almost three years we got mm -hmm. married before we moved to england um unofficially officially but like unofficially we didn't have a whole event or anything but it just made our lives easier to move abroad and so we're finally having a wedding. It's a very, very small wedding. It's only our very, very closest people that have had very big impacts on our life. And so we are going home to celebrate that. And we will have some vlogs up uh, on our trip there. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we will see you in that vlog very soon. All right.